Welcome to They That Hope with Father Dave and Bob, seeing humor and hope in a crazy world. And I'm Bob. And I'm Father Dave. And we are we so glad. Yes, you're back. Yes. Uh, Father Dave was on a whirlwind tour. I was. Is this going to come out late? Uh, we'll find out. Okay. If it is, it's because Father Dave was on a whirlwind tour. I'm sorry. Tour. We wanted to do it yesterday, but the schedule just didn't work. So sorry. You flew back and forth to Florida. I did. I did. I did. Yep. And the weather, was it nicer than it was, here? Because well, today was, today pretty was nice, 82 degrees yeah. and sunny. So, <clears throat> um, Yeah, it was gorgeous. Yeah. yeah. The water, it was just really beautiful. Not that I got in the water, but I was able to look at it. Oh, Actually, I, had I, don't get it. I don't like getting in water. I know you don't. Yeah, yeah. I think it's weird to be in the same liquid as other people. I know, I know, I know, I know. That's why I could have never been a twin. That's yeah. That's there's a lot of reasons why you couldn't have been a twin. Yeah, totally. That would that'd be one of them. But it was yeah, it was beautiful. The water was. I had dinner last night. Looking at the water, it was fantastic. That's awesome. Yeah, you would awesome. have loved it. A I bet I would have. A nice salmon. Oh, you'll eat salmon though. I do. It's yeah, the only yeah. fish I eat. Yeah, yeah. It was great. Yeah, that's really cool. My kids call it pink chicken. Okay. Because they 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 think they don't like fish, so we just roll with that. Yeah. Better parenting through deception. Yes. Did I ever tell you the story about the Barna Fun? Uh, you have not. So when I was younger, we used to go to the Cape, and my grandparents the lived Cape. on the Cape. The so Cape. pretentious. Well, hey, we're, you know, elitist yeah. northeasterners. One percenters. Exactly. So we would go to the Cape and uh, Dennis Shores, actually, and it was fun. We had, like, this cabin, and the beach was right across the street, but there was an arcade called the Barn of Fun. Now, not surprisingly, I would much rather go to the arcade than to the beach. The arcade was about a half hour drive away. So if I went to the beach a few times, I would eventually get to go to the arcade. So the only real reason I went to the beach was to build up Go to the credit. barn Oh fun The barn Oh fun It must have been Irish, of course. I think, the barn Oh fun so uh, I went there as a kid, stopped going in my teen years after my grandparents passed away. But when I was married and we were on vacation in that area, we decided to it's go. It's still open. Well, this is even crazier. So we decided to go to our old stomping grounds. And I was, you know, pointing out to my wife, Jennifer. I said, oh, there's the cabin that we, you know, used to summer in. And then as we drove around the block and I said, and there's the barn of fun. One block away, my parents drove a half hour around the island just so I wouldn't find out that the barn of fun was in walking so distance. Fantastic. And I only discovered this in my 30s. That is so fantastic. <laughs> I love your parents even more than I yeah. did. Yeah, yeah, they just, they just they're like, well, if you knew how close it was, we so could never get you So why didn't you tell you me that? I would have talked to your mom. We had the dedication of... The George Rice Music Center this weekend. Yeah, Bob's mom was, and she's such, your mom is so, so sweet. Yeah. And I would have loved to be able to talk to her about that. Did Actually, you ask her about the my bionic my bionic godmother nun? No, it just didn't seem like the time. Just didn't feel right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. She left today? She did. Okay, yeah, she I'll, next morning. time, next time. Yeah. But that was a wonderful, it was just, you know, I think to have your mom here and then people here to celebrate. Yeah, I'm sorry my sister wasn't like, here. Yeah, but, sure. you know, it just, uh, it was great that she was in town for my son's First communion. And how'd that go? Oh, it was wonderful. It was so cute. Aiden comes up to me and goes, Father Dave, Father Dave, and started telling me all about the Bible he got with <laughs> real leather cover yes. or something on we it. We took him to a Catholic to the Max, Nelson's gift store, and just said, I, I foolishly began by saying you can pick out anything you want, and then I immediately had to put limitations on it. It's cool that he's that excited. He wanted to get like, you know, he, he immediately gravitated towards this like Huge bronze. Huge statue. Yeah, that's yeah, right. This bronze, Our Lady of, of Guadalupe. You know, six hundred. I'm like, okay, let me let me pull this back. You can get a Bible, a Bible cover, and a picture of Jesus. And then he was really excited because we bought so much stuff. He got two free mugs from the discount wall, and that's fantastic. He was so ex- and he doesn't drink anything out of a mug. You know, <laughs> he doesn't. doesn't drink, he doesn't drink coffee. I mean, I thought I'd, I'd get him smoking <laughs> cigarettes first before he got him into the coffee addiction. That's fantastic. But so it was, was a nice day. Really his first communion. It. Beautiful. We had a great time. It was. It was just a joy. And then the next morning, I took him to mass with me, and he became an official altar server. Oh, that's great. That's yeah. great. Although, could we go here for a moment because? I was talking to Aiden in the little social we had afterwards, and he said, well, actually, it wasn't my first communion. It was about my fifth. So do you want to fill us in on yeah, that? Yeah, well, he, uh, so he definitely snuck one at one point. He just, <laughs> he just came forward when I wasn't paying attention, put the hands out, you know, and I had to explain to not do that. And he was like, okay. And then he was uh, in altar server and training, 
So I was on one side of the altar and he was on the other. And then Monsignor, you know, is just used to giving kids the Eucharist. So he lifted it up. Aiden put his hands right out. As you should. And then Monsignor came over and whispered to me, he's like, I think I just gave Aiden his first communion. And I went, it's actually his second. Yeah. But, and that seemed to happen a couple more times. It was funny because he said the first, our dedication was on Thursday, I guess. Right. Friday. Yeah, Friday. Yeah. So he said he had to go to practice for first communion. I said, Aiden, if he says body of Christ, what are you going to say? He said, amen. I said, done. You, you don't have to go to any you practice. You make a great DRE. Yeah, yes. yeah, you missed your calling. There's a little bit more than that. Is there no. like you should? Yeah, I was really. gonna say really. you should. Go, I mean, you, hopefully, all the stuff happened before. Like when <laughs> right. I do a wedding marriage uh, uh, rehearsal the night before, nobody's gonna remember anything. Right. right? You see, so just kind of go through the motions. You stand there. You stand there. Yeah, I yeah. do. You did. Good job. Exactly. That's exactly. Great. Yeah. 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 So, yeah, it was good. It was good. Good to be back. This is your uh, speaking of sacraments and stuff. Um, it just seemed like a natural transition. <laughs> it isn't. We're talking the Oscars. Oh, okay. We can talk about that. Good Lord. Why we, do we go over a schedule at the beginning? Well, I I see it like just a, a montage of no, things. No. Like, uh, like we'll get to these. Th- we're talking sacraments. and, and we'll, But let's talk about the Oscars. Let's well, that was, that really, was smooth. That was smooth. You just flew in there. Way to <laughs> I go. I was trying to. And you're Way looking at me like, well, oh, we, we have, like, this isn't on video. And everyone's going to see you being like, no, no, well, no. We have other things because there's that ad that you're supposed to do. Do I have to do everything around here? Pretty much. So. No, not the ad. The Oscars. You said you wanted to say something about the Oscars. So the Oscars happened. Okay. <laughs> this is horrible. <laughs> I knew this show was going to be awful. <laughs> this is why we don't do late night shows. So we do. We so do did this. you even know the Oscars happened? Yes, I did. But Bob and I do this this text chain as I'm, <laughs> I am in the airport. And I said, um, let's see, what, what should we talk about? I said, I'll arrive at 815 and I said, we could talk about St. Gianna, which we're going to. And then we could talk about my 25th anniversary of ordination. Mm. And he goes, sure, nobody listens anyway. <laughs> so I respond, what do we have to lose? And he says, Hasbo created an Optimus Prime Transformer Oh, come thing. on, don't act like you can't read that. Optimus Prime. You know who Optimus Prime is. I do not. He's the, you know what a Transformer is, please. Yeah. More than me. For, for electricity. No, 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 no I know no, what it no, is. No, don't no, be no. silly. Come on. I know, I know, I know what it is. I know in Durango, you didn't play with Transformers. You were out there playing Cowboys and Washington football team. Yeah. But Transformers were like the bomb. And because um, it's a robot, it's a vehicle, and it's a puzzle. So, thanks for listening to. This Sorry. is why you can't have the board. I just pushed board. a button and cut him off. Yeah, it was a nice try. So, Hasbro created. A Optimus Prime robot that can transform itself. That's amazing. You hit a button and it even does a. That's amazing. Thanks for feigning interest. I can't. I'm just going to remember that look when you talk about your ordination. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're yeah, right. Yeah, that's going to be really. All right. Really and no, exciting. yes, I knew the Oscars happened, but no, but I didn't watch it. I have no idea. Yeah, I bet you. you I'll bet you. you and the I rest of the planet. I'll bet you. I did not seen any of the movies that actually were nominated. Well, you know, unless weird... Wonder Woman was. Nominated. <laughs> I don't think that was nominated. Okay, okay. Well, of nominated. course, there weren't really movies. That's what's so weird about it. Like, I mean, normally the Oscars are kind of the more art house. Oscars are Hollywood giving itself awards, which is kind of ironic. I when I was a theater major, we had a joke: How many actors does it take to change a light bulb? And the answer was ten. One to do it, and the other nine to say what a great job he did. Yeah. So, um, Hollywood giving itself awards is always weird, and they're always going to give themselves weird awards. They're not going to like what the commoners like. But this year was even stranger because there weren't a lot of okay. Cut to the chase. What won the best movie? Uh, Nomadland. Oh no! With Frances McDermott. Yeah, who, did who she win it? Won, did she win it? Yeah, she win, did. She won it. Okay. But you know what was really weird about it? What? So that is weird. They did this. So uh, Chadwick Boseman, who played Black Panther mm-hmm. and who sadly passed away of cancer, really Same amazing dude. my brother. He, is that right? Mm-hmm. Oh, wow. So he, um, he was up for an Oscar for Best Actor for Ma Rainey's Black Bottom, which is, um, it's like black a classic. Bottom? Play. Like that, black Bottom? Like we're just going to move black on. Black That's what bottom. it's called. Like his yeah. rear end? I don't, I haven't seen the, pl- I haven't, it was a play. By August Wilson, and it's a movie, and okay. I haven't seen either. But okay, the point is— we should is, probably move through this. He's won almost all the awards, <clears throat> you know, the SAG Awards and all the other things, posthumously, obviously, and his, and his widow is there to accept. So the producers of the Oscars decided that they wouldn't end with the best movie. 
okay. they would end with the best actor. Nice, nice. Probably thinking to themselves, this will be a great way to Unless end the Oscars. He, doesn't win. he didn't win. That's awkward. It was really it was Anthony Hopkins. Okay. Who okay. wasn't even there. There you go. He didn't even have a person there to speak for him. It was just go. like Anthony Hopkins. And thanks for watching. The, and that was the end of the Oscars. It was That's just great. the weirdest thing. But the coolest thing about the Oscars was uh, Tyler Perry, who I don't know much of. I, I mean, I know he makes a lot of uh, films that have his name in it. I have no idea. Um, but he get, he won he won the humanitarian award, and he just gave such a powerful speech. He <clears> himself <throat> came out of poverty, just talked about the way we judge people. He said, "I." He said, "We we have to turn away from hate." Yeah, he said, it was really. I, I would not hate anybody. You know, who's a cop? I would not hate anybody who's Asian. I would not hate anybody who's LBTG. You know, like yeah, I wouldn't no. hate, you know, we have to turn away from hate. And it was just a, yeah, profound maybe moment. we can link that in the YouTube or something oh, like that. It was that. great. Yeah, you sent it to me. And honestly, out of the blue, it's kind of like, why did you send me this? And then I watched it. I thought, oh my goodness, that's really, really good. Yeah. Really, yeah. And especially, yeah, to that, to that crowd. Right. You know, like, yeah, it was good. It was great. Yeah. Yeah. It was All beautiful. right. Now we can do our little ad thing. Oh, good. Yeah. Hey, Father Dave and I need your help with a challenge that will benefit students at Franciscan University. Some of the university's generous donors have put together $160,000. Seriously? That's yeah. amazing. Yeah. Yeah. And they're challenging the Franciscan University community to match this amount. I thought this was going to be like a TikTok dance off. No, it's no, it's just scholarships. That's and yeah. that's what we really yeah. need. Yep. So from now through May 1st, your donation to Franciscan, large or small, will be doubled. That means your $25 gifts becomes $50. Your $50 gifts becomes $100. Okay, I think we get the math. I mean, it's <laughs> not that hard, <laughs> well, Bob. For some people it is. <laughs> this is a great opportunity to bless our... Stay away from the board. This is a great opportunity to help bless our students since 100% of your donation will fund scholarships and financial aid, the aid so many of them need in order to receive an academically excellent and passionately Catholic education here. And this is a good time to do it because there's a lot of students that are always a bit on the yeah. bubble. Will they be able to come back in the fall? Uh, you know, many of them were blessed by the step in faith mm -hmm. in, in the fall, and the numbers didn't drop in the spring. I mean, that's been was, amazing. That was, it really has that been was really great. awesome. How do they, did you say how they were supposed to donate? Uh, you can give now at franciscan.edu slash giving. That's franciscan.edu slash giving. And put Dave and Bob in the little yeah, memo. Yeah, for thing. a coupon code. Yeah, for you a coupon code. We'll double it. 20% off. Mm -hmm. uh, double it. Oh, that would be, that would quadruple it if you're Never doubling mind. a double. <clears throat> Never mind. Never mind. I'll, I mean, I'm, I'll throw like a dollar in. No, you do not. Actually, you donate. I pay attention. Oh, you do? Mm -hmm. Oh, that's scary. I better donate more. I don't know. Anyway, uh, but it's an awesome opportunity, so please help. May 1st, uh, Joseph. Uh, the Worker. The Worker. Saturday. Oh, is that right? Yep. All right. Yeah, yeah. Saturday, I think. Yeah. yeah, that's fantastic. One of the few saints with two feast days. Yeah, when's at it, least. When's his other feast day? I March 19th. That's right. Yep. Those are kind of close together. Yep. And then Holy Family, that's partly his too. Yeah, I mean, you'd like to think. You would think. Yeah, he gets a bunch of them. He, yeah. And well-deserved. Good laddie that Joseph <laughs> he, was. He deserves the Oscar. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yes, for that. Best supporting actor, I would say. Yep. And and that's a humble thing to do. Yep. Um, hey, other cool things coming up. Yes, is, there you it's go. It's your 25th Gee. anniversary Gee. of wow, ordination. Wow, Bob. Thanks for remembering. Yeah, oh, it's on my calendar. Were you at my ordination? No. Where were you? I don't remember. Because you were on campus. I was on campus. And I, well, no. Okay, I, so I was Tuesday. Doing a gig, I was doing, I was traveling somewhere <laughs> that time. And I, and I regretted at the time missing it. Well, and that's, why every year, that's why I didn't go to your wedding. Uh, there you, fair <laughs> enough. Hold on, I'm not going take, to his wedding. Take that. Yeah. No, yeah. So Tuesday's 25 years. It's really, that's actually, amazing. it's really hard to believe. Yeah. Yeah. yeah myself and. Uh, so what's the date? May 4th. Tuesday, <sighs> May 4th. Yep. Which is there something else May 4th? Yes. What is it? Please. You're my friend. Come on. Your birthday? It's no, not your birthday. No, it's not your anniversary. No. The day before Cinco de Mayo? Uh, Star Wars Day. Oh, May the May 4th be May with the you. 4th, May the 4th. Yeah, May the 4th. Yeah, yeah. I was, yeah. That, would, that was my next guess. You yeah, me up I know. Yeah, too quickly. Yeah, that's, that's so cool. You were <clears> ordained <throat> on Star Wars Day. Yes, that is really cool. That was kind of the way reason we chose that date, right. actually. Right. But I was, you know, I was ordained here on campus. Uh, yeah, was it, in the was, who else was ordained? Well, uh, Father Stan Holland was ordained a priest, and then Father Joe Lehman, uh, our provincial, was ordained a deacon, and then he would have been ordained a priest the following November. So, okay. gotcha. Yeah, so it's it's just honestly, it's hard to believe it's been twenty five years. It, yeah. it really does. 
it seems just like yesterday that, that it happened. And yeah, it's, you know, people say, I just, for as, for as long as, as much time as I spent trying to discern, you know, Lord, is this what you want me to do? And, and I, I mean, I always thought about it. The thought about being a priest was always in the back of my mind. There's a story when I was a kid, my parents tell that we had a, a priest visiting and he said, you know, what do you want to be when you grow up? And I said, I want to be a priest. And, but if he'd have been a doctor, I'd have said, I want to be a doctor, an architect, <laughs> you know, whatever. That's why I was interested in politics, so I guess. But, but honestly, it's just been such an amazing, yeah, an amazing, wonderful 25 years and, I can't imagine. I can't imagine doing anything than, than what I'm doing. So was um, was it priesthood and then Franciscans, but, or was it <clears throat> a combination? It was a combination. I never, honestly, I never considered, that's actually a good question. I never really considered diocesan life very much. Okay. Um, maybe because I have five bro- or four brothers uh, and just that desire for fraternity and brotherhood. But also, like, I just, and it's really one of the things that we talk about information is is that we're a friar before we're a priest and Mm -hmm. and that relationship with the brothers and the accountability and the prayer and the meals and the time together silly things the playing cornhole together you know yeah but that's really it's i just delight in that so that's at the heart of this you know so i was a brother i was a friar long before i was ordained so uh, I never, How many years are you a friar before ordination? Yeah, so I, I entered the community in the fall of 89, so you, you become a postulant, and then you're a novice. So as a novice, you're technically a friar. So I took uh, my first vows in 91. So for I was ordained in 96, so for five years wow. prior to that, yeah. Yeah. And then I was ordained a deacon. I actually kind of had a, a short deck in it. Um, just for a number of circumstances, I was able to finish seminary early, so they let me get ordained early. So okay. I did actually my diaconate down in that. I met your mom and dad when I was down at St. Pat's. Oh, yeah. So in it was at Ta- St. Pat's in Tampa. In Tampa. Yeah, right. your mom and dad came more than once. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, that was when they were living down <coughs> in uh, Harbor Island. Yeah. yeah. Right. And then uh, beautiful, yeah, it was, it was beautiful church. ordained uh, here in the field house, and my first mass was the next morning with Christ, uh, Christ the King and... It was just, I, I, yeah, I, yeah. It was just a beautiful, beautiful experience. I just remember, you know, I was a master's student there at the time, and um, yeah, you shared that joy with everybody. I mean, yeah. everybody was so excited. Of course, you were very active with ministries on campus, and I, I know you had some role in the chapel office, and uh, it was just a. It was really. It was beautiful. It was I mean, f- I, not even being there. Just the event. Yeah, was it, it was a really so, fun yeah, celebration exciting. for the university camp. I mean, both father. Uh, Stan and I were graduates of Francis University, so it was really a fun, fun event for the university. It was in the middle of finals, so it was kind of a good break for the students. But having my family here, uh, I think all of my mom's brothers and sisters were here, which may have been the last time they were all together, yeah. maybe. My grandpa was here, and he ended up passing just a couple of months after that. And it was just, it was it was absolutely fantastic. First, you know, having a mass just with my family in the friary. Uh, yeah, it was it was it was fantastic. And then remind me, because um, I only learned this recently. You get when you're ordained. There's something not everybody does the where you put it on your hands and it's buried with your mother. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> it's not a custom. Some of the friars did it. Now, now my mother's gonna say, "Why didn't I do that?" <laughs> sorry, oh, mom. Sorry. Yeah. sorry. No, it's not. It's just not a custom we did. But here's actually a great story about. That. Well, wait. You should explain it to the listeners. Yeah. though. So it's... when your when your hands are anointed as a priest, they take uh, usually a purificator and then wipe. You, they dry your hands with it, and then it's placed around the hands of the mother uh, when the mother passes away and it's okay. buried with her. It's just and, not— And isn't there something about the uh, confession thing being given to the, the father? First, the first stole that you use? Okay, yeah. <laughs> we didn't do that either. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Sorry, Mom and Dad. I thought you guys loved your parents. Yeah. Anyway. Well, but here, here was this is funny. So I remember when I was a deacon, Mom and Dad— or Mom called me, and she was asking about a chalice because it's customary for parents to buy their son a chalice. And, and, and I said, you know, Mom and Dad, I, I appreciate it, but— you know, as a friar, there's always going to be chalices wherever I am, so I, I don't need that. You right. know? So you could tell in her voice. She was like, oh, okay, <laughs> well, it's just something we You're were— so, I've abandoned kind of, myself yeah, to kind of looking kids, forward brother. to it, yeah. you know. <clears throat> so she calls back— I'll get you a card. Yeah, she calls back <laughs> a couple of days later, and she goes, you know, we were talking to our pastor about what you said, and, and he said, oh, yeah, yeah, but— but he said that when Daddy and I have, have died, the, you'd be happy to have a chalice <laughs> from us. It's like, so what do you say that? It's like, yeah, no, I'm fine. Yeah. So it's actually really cool. One of the things I did say, I said, okay, that's great. But here's, here's my request. Um, don't just go to like chalices or us and just buy something. Sure. Um, 
to, to think. So it was really, really beautiful. I also said I didn't want anything just overly fancy, and I just wanted something really, really simple. Shaped, so, shaped like a skull. Yeah, yeah. So my dad actually designed it and had a Native American in Arizona make it, and it's just a beautiful sil- oh, silver wow. chalice, and it has uh, the San Damiano in the bottom, just the shape of it. And then engraved, it, it has like um, eight eight kind of circles on the bottom, and it's representing my mom and my dad and then six brothers and sisters. And then in the middle, it has a San Damiano, and it says the circle of the family lasts forever when Christ is in the middle there. So it's really, That's so beautiful. now, I mean, so mom was right, yeah, and dad was right. It's <laughs> like, yeah, this is good, so. Wow, that, was, that was nice they gave that to you. It's too yeah. bad you couldn't give anything, give anything to back to them. Yeah. <laughs> oh, well, thanks. <laughs> womp, womp. Um, no, you can't. Look, you have stopped trying to touch the buttons. All Why right? didn't it even work? Well, that's because oh, there we go. you need the magic touch. There you go. Our promo for this week, other than the Franciscan promo, is a shout out to the many people who indeed took the... I can't believe anybody took it. <laughs> the They That Hope quiz. We must have more than two listeners because we had 23. Uh, well... We had twenty three. We had four. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> we had twenty three people doing it, um, but and they put their names in, but we didn't set up the form in a way that I would know who actually got it right. So we don't know how they did. Well, I actually had a little charts here. I can see how, like, generally people did. Like the hardest question was, where did Father Dave first see a Pope in person? And the options were Washington D.C., Rome, Iraq, and Baltimore. Oh, that's okay. And the answer is Baltimore. Good. I'm glad they got that right. So yeah, yeah that was that was pretty split uh, with things. So some people got that wrong. Uh, a lot of people got that wrong. Pay attention, people. It, it was people. almost like yeah. It was, I'm not just it was doing this for my split around health. Uh, pretty much everybody uh, knew that my son was from Haiti. Yeah. The yeah. one person put Moss Eisley, which I think. Do you know what Moss Eisley yeah. is? No. It's, it's a Star Wars reference. The Creature Cantina. Well, they totally did that. Yeah, That's great. <laughs> yeah I'm glad. I, mean, I hope, I hope. <laughs> yeah, one, one can only hope. Uh, another fairly blended one was if you like Christmas movies or not. Some people actually thought yes or maybe. So that's yeah. all right. So uh, those people that responded, I don't know if you won, but we said we'd say your name. So here we go. Oh, wait, I sh- I'm going to put some music on in the background. It'll make it feel better. Don't, don't, don't. Where's the, maybe this is it. All right. So special thanks go out to Turn it down. Matt Miller. We fixed that in post. Oh. Matt Miller, Virginia Brockney, Anonymous, N.A., Julie Fleckstein, Mary Brewer, John Sa- Shaughnessy, Beloved, Kara, Rick Kubrick, Tracy Tremblay, Father Gregory Plow, Tracy, Tracy Tremblay. She did it three times. Beth, Rebecca, Betsy, where do I type in Dave and Bob code? Beth Anderson, Katrina Rudolph, Patrick Gilbert, Bobby Melching, and the Traub family. Thanks, guys. <laughs> that was so fantastic. You know, Tracy actually sent me a, another email that I'd like to read. Uh, she was the one. She tried it three times, uh, but she says, I listen to your podcast. Uh, all seven of my children have attended at least a semester at Franciscan. Oh, Five awesome. of them even graduated. Uh, but she wanted to write about the superpower to which I aspire. And she said this, humbly, I admit to possessing such powers. Just this past weekend, I was able to assist two of my small grandchildren in ending their days-long worrying runs of constipation. Using my hands-on training as a physical therapist, I was able to gently persuade these small gastrointestinal systems to move along. Thank you, Bob, for realizing the importance of such important feats to the health of families everywhere. I pray God bestows the superpower upon Bob as well, and perhaps, Bob, your anosmia will be a blessing should this come to a fruition. That is one of the strangest emails we've ever got in our life. Yes. It's beautiful. I can't believe... Thank you, Tracy. And she says, P.S., I'm greatly pleased with you offering a 3T program in physical and occupational therapy That's with cool. Walsh. That's cool. Thank you. Cool. Thanks, you, Tracy, for writing. I just can't believe you wrote that. I don't know what to think of that. We'll just pray about it. Okay. I still don't know. <laughs> I, I really don't know what to make of that. That's fantastic. Okay, today's feast. Yeah, this is where, this Saint is Saint Gianna Molana. I don't think that's right. It's not. What's your, what's your it's last G- name? Gianna. Well, it's Mola. I think M M O L L A. I think. Yeah, I like Gianna Mola. All right, because it's Italian. Yeah. Yeah. No, si. today's today's our feast day, and I I think well, actually, yesterday is our feast day because this comes out tomorrow. 
We hope. <laughs> yeah, we'll, we'll, wait, we'll wait and see. Again, we're a little late on the game here. We should never do podcasts at night. <laughs> yeah, we shouldn't. That, we, that, I thought that was our lesson last night. Yeah, we really shouldn't. Oh. Yeah, but St. Giannis was... Um, yeah, I don't know much about her, actually. She's the one who died... I clearly don't know her last name. She was pregnant, and I, I forget what there... There was a complication, and they suggested... They gave her, I think, one of three options. Do an abortion, a total hysterectomy, or I can't remember what the third one was, and she said no. She said... She's really an amazing... She was born in, like, I look at the date here, early 20s, 1920s or something like okay. that. Went to. She wanted to be a missionary, but her health was somewhat compromised. Uh, so she ended up going to med- medical school. And this would have been in wow. the 30s or, yeah, in the 40s, I guess. And she graduated, I think, in 49. So really, really Where impressive. Where is she from? Italy. Okay. Yeah. So she went to med school in, um, I think she was an OB is, is what she was. But anyway, she got pregnant. They said, you know, you can't have the baby. It could compromise your health. And she said that, she actually said, my baby's life is more valuable than mine. Mm. So she does. She ends up having the child. It was her fourth child, which they also named Gianna. And she actually becomes a doctor. She's traveled in the United States. Really? Her, da- her daughter comes. So, yeah, so she passed away, uh, I think, just a couple of days after. Now, but it's interesting. <clears throat> she died. It, it's 1962. She was 39 years old. Wow. Um, she was canonized in 2004 uh, by John Paul. And her husband was at the canonization. That's beautiful. And it's the first time, they said, it's the first time ever that the husband of somebody was canonized that was was able to be present for it. That's amazing. But one of the miracles was actually a Protestant woman um, who had no real faith, no really devotions to her. But the, the nuns that were taking care of her said, you know, you should pray to Sister Gianna, or to Blessed yeah. Gianna. Yeah. And, and she, she was cured. And so it's... Kind of a cool story that even ca- even non Catholics can have miracles handled <laughs> or that. But she just, yeah. I mean, she's very obviously very popular in the pro life and just the the dignity. Well, there's and the, a lot the, of girls yeah. in here named Gianna. Yes, there are. Yes, yeah. there are. Yes, there are. Yeah, Gianna and Gianna's and John Pauls. There's plenty of those. We too. Gianna Paul would be a good name. Oh, there you go. That's not a bad. I guess one. Gianna is actually a feminine of John. I don't know. Giovanni. Giovanni? I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. Hmm. I know. So, yeah, so we were able to celebrate her. And I think Catherine of Siena is coming up, too. Yes, that's true. Is that like like the sixth or something like that? Um, I know it's coming up. So it's have you you have you ever been to uh, Santa Maria Super Minerva in Rome, the burial place of Catherine of Siena? No. Okay, so it's, it's right over by the Pantheon. It's one of the few Gothic churches in Rome. Okay. So her body is buried there, but her head... And her finger are in Siena. And her finger. Yeah. I mean, so the, head's, I just, the head's just strange enough. Yeah, I just love the conversation. I can only imagine the conversation when this was going down. <laughs> it's the, like, the we, debate. We, we want some of her. Oh, you're, we want the arm. Oh, you're not getting the arm. Right. Well, give us at least a finger. Okay, you can have, you can have a finger. There has to be some lawyer that this is his or her specialty, you know, like saint bodies. Because we just had, they just had a big fight about Fulton Sheen. Yeah. Where his body was going to be, in Peoria or in New York. And how'd that get settled? Back it, in Peoria? It's in Peoria. Okay, okay. Yeah, okay. That they, they kind of won since he was a priest of the Diocese of Peoria. So these things don't change. We still, no. We're still fighting over where it's saints' I don't think we were cutting him up. You're probably right. You know. Because that, that, that probably wouldn't have gone over very well. St. Catherine Siena, I think she was one of like 23 children. St. Gian, I think, was one of 13, or her parents were one of 13 or something like that. That's crazy. 20 kids is a lot of kids. Yeah, it's a, it's a tremendous amount. You know, something that people don't realize about Catherine of Siena, I mean, obviously she had uh, incredible writings, and um, one of her most beautiful images in her writings was um, the image of the bridge, of the chasm of sin that separates God and man, and the cross being the bridge that... Oh, really? Um, and, and that's I her. I realized that was her. Well, and it's funny. You talk about Protestants. I remember when I was Absolutely. A, when I was a kid in Young Life, and I remember the guy drawing on the board this chasm between God and man, and here's the cr- and just drew the cross right there. And it was only so relevant. It, it, he it, was right. And it was yeah. only as I came to Franciscan and I'm studying Catherine of Siena. I'm like, she that was her. Like this was it's a so Catholic. Funny. Like this is such a this is such a cool and beautiful thing. But uh, Catherine of Siena was really like the Mother Teresa of her times. Mm. I mean, she, this was during the Black Plague, and, uh, you know, nobody wanted to touch bodies or bury them or do anything, and she was out there digging graves. I mean, she was a, she was a force of nature. Yeah. You know, she really 
served the poor and had such an incredible reputation. I mean, again, similar to Mother Teresa, you know, that she told the Pope, you know, get back. You know, he was in Avignon, mm-hmm. France, get back to Rome. And he did because she just had And that's that somebody kind of what, that I asked somebody, why is her finger in Siena? And that's what the guy told us is because she pointed, you know, go back to, go oh, back to Rome. So, yeah. so they left her finger there. It was cool. A number of years, uh, quite, quite a while ago now, my folks and I went to uh, Siena and we were at, we stayed with the sisters there. You can stay in the convent. And then we, it was New Year's Eve, so there's a huge, beautiful piazza in Siena. Siena is a really beautiful town. If you've okay. not been there, it's really, really yeah. beautiful. So we spent New Year's Eve just, they had a big concert and music and fireworks in, in Siena. It was just fantastic. Oh, I thought you were going to push something. No, no, no. No, I was just getting ready for the end of the show. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I guess I'm done. Okay. No, no, no. Thanks for listening, keep, folks. No, Bye. please keep talking. It was, I don't have anything it, else it was to a say. piazza and there was fireworks. It was done. It was great. And there was moonlight. It was great. That was great. Yeah, no, it was really fun. <laughs> Actually, Santa's great. So, yeah, we've got a couple of saints coming up Joseph, Gianna, St. Catherine of Siena, my. My feast day. I mean, it's this is a huge May, week. Star Wars Day. Yeah, Star Wars Day. And then the students' last day of classes is. Star Wars Day. Is the sixth, I think. No, oh. the fifth. The fifth, right? Reading the fifth, day is the reading sixth. Reading day six so and then finals. The fifth is known as Revenge of the Fifth. We're almost we're almost through Praise be this Jesus. year. I mean, numbers are down. Yes, yeah, yeah, they're way down. Yeah. yeah. I mean it was God. just it was just the Easter bump. We had we had quite a few cases of COVID when the students came back from Easter. The whole thing lasted about 10, 14 days, and it's back to where it was. Yeah, it was so. an insane 14 days. Though. It was an insane 14 days. Yeah, it, it was, was insane. I'll just be glad. I mean, what's the end game on this? I, I just saw a thing. It's, it's, I mean, it's just my mom and I were just talking about it, actually. The, the CDC says if you've been vaccinated and you're outside, you don't have to wear a mask. It's like, <laughs> what, what, what is the end game? Where do we? I mean, it's, and it's just funny because so all the advertisements say otherwise. They're like, Get vaccinated and you can yeah run free, born you know, make free. Make out, make out with all your friends. That's right. That's so right. We just keep praying for, uh, yeah, the world to come back to some kind of normalcy. You know, keep the good things that the Lord. Well, did. and that's just it. It's you know, and uh, and move on from the other stuff. So we'll just we we we'll had a visitor see. visiting at mass on Sunday, and you know, all the students were outside. It was just a really nice day, and they were all yeah. sitting around and. You know, and they said it's just so refreshing to see people again, right? So, yeah, it is. That's great. For all of you listening uh, that you're still struggling, you're still isolated, we're praying for you. Yes, uh, yes, yes, it's, yes. It's just such Come a... Come visit us. It, yeah, <laughs> Come to Ohio. Yeah, yeah. yeah, we're friendly in Ohio. Yeah, we are. It's, it's rural, we're spread out, and it's, a, it's a beautiful thing. But uh, it is a beautiful thing. Uh, we're entering into uh, spring, better weather, uh, God willing, over the next few months, just the... Uh, isolation going Amen. away. Amen. And uh, celebrating. Claim it. Amen. Jesus Claim it. wins it. Amen. Wins the day again. Amen. He's a winner. <laughs> <laughs> he is. We're just going to keep on winning with Jesus. <laughs> why don't we close with that thought? Why don't, you, why don't you close us with prayer tonight? Oh, Jesus, we thank you for winning. We thank you for this Easter season, which we continue to celebrate. We thank you for amazing saints and models of holiness for us. And we thank you for the gift of hope. Uh, Lord God, we thank you that we know that you have won the battle. So uh, for whatever's going on in our lives, whatever intentions we have, uh, whatever's in our heart, Lord God, we offer that to you. And we pray as we continue to head towards Pentecost uh, that we can keep our eyes fixed on you, that we can be an Easter people, that Alleluia is our song, and that we can live in the hope and the peace that only you can give. Amen. May Almighty God pour his blessings on you who are listening, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thanks for being with us. Amen. Thanks, you guys. Many, many blessings. Again, thanks for all of you that uh, filled out that quiz. That was so awesome, and we really appreciate that. Hey, keep sending us stories of hope at hope at franciscan.edu. That's hope at franciscan.edu. God bless. Yeah.